So here we have one of the sheets of stencils. They're designed to fold to an A5 to save space and although you can't see it on the camera, this design's already been cut onto here. I'll show you one of the others that I've already removed some of the stencils from and you can see a bit better. Here's some that I've already used on the model and so that's why they're already green. And all you do is just lift them off with a scalpel and place them on the model like so. So, for the first test, I'm going to use one of our Tinilon pattern turrets. I've already chosen the colour scheme, which is going to be this dark green and these two other colours. One thing to remember when you're using stencils is if it's a multiple colour scheme, the first stencils you lay down will show through every other stencil you put down. So you don't want to go crazy with the first layer, else it will just end up mostly one colour. Once your base coat is fully dry, you simply place the stencils where you want the designs to be. Now these don't show up terribly on the camera, so I've sprayed a few here brown just to make them show up a little bit better. You don't have to do that, it's just to show it on the camera for you guys. So we just place them, bearing in mind that we're going to use some further stencils with other colours later, so don't just fill in the whole area with them just yet. So I'll place a few more down. Sometimes you can use them to go round detail, and then you push them down, or you squish it into the detail, if there is any, like so. Make sure there's no air trapped underneath. And I normally use a scalpel to lift them up to place them on. So, here's the turret with all the stencils for the first stage. As you can see, I haven't got, gone crazy and covered the whole area, otherwise you'll just have mostly one coloured turret. Also, it's good to point out here, the stencils stretch quite a long way, so even here with these ladders, if you push quite hard and press really hard into the detail, the stencil will conform around the detail and stretch into place. It's one of the beauties of this film stencils. So, after that, we simply spray the next colour. second layer of stencils. Again I've sprayed them a different colour just so you can see them. It's better if you don't spray them because you can see through them to see the detail and see exactly where you're putting the stencils. Again squish them into the detail as much as you can. Now the Hexocam sheet comes with two different sizes of stencils. The first layer I used were the smaller and this second layer are the larger of the Hexocam stencils. You can mix and match them like I am, or you can just use one size at a time on the model. When applying them, you need to try and imagine what the tank will look like without all the stencils on. It's sometimes a good idea to overlap some of them on previous stencils, but don't do that on all of them. And also try to leave gaps between the stencils as well, so that there's areas where there's been no stencils applied. This will then give the three colour effect. see all the stencils are in place. After we've made sure they're all firmly pressed into the detail, we can put the spray on the third and final colour. Again, we don't want to go too heavy with this coat of paint, otherwise you may end up with raised areas of paint around the stencils. Once you've finished applying this coat of paint, leave the model to dry. Once fully dry, we can start removing the stencils. Now you can keep these to use again if you wish. If you've squished them into the detail quite a long way, they may not be as easily reused. 
can use a scalpel to help remove them if you wish, but obviously be careful not to scratch the paintwork underneath the stencil.